The 2023 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine was announced this week and has been jointly awarded to Hungarian biochemist Katalin Kariko and American immunologist Drew Weissman for their decades of unappreciated research into mRNA, which enabled the effective and quick development of mRNA vaccines for COVID. Now, I'm not a big fan of the Nobel Prizes because of their obvious snub of female scientists throughout history for 120 years now. In fact, Kariko is the 13th woman to win a Nobel in physiology or medicine of among a total of 227 laureates since 1901, including Weissman. But this one feels like a win and no one deserves it more than these two. The duo worked on mRNA research trying to understand how different types of RNA interact with the immune system. The simple explanation and summary of the findings is this. They used mammalian immune cells in the lab and recognized that while these immune cells do not react to mammalian mRNA, some immune cells become activated with mRNA that is developed in the lab. This immune response led to inflammation in these cells. So natural mammalian mRNA is accepted by bodies, but the lab developed ones were not. Further work into this led to them eventually discovering that instead of using unmodified mRNA molecules from the lab, if they modified the basis or the four nucleotides, the mRNA, the immune response was averted in these cells. Immediately, the two scientists saw the potential to use mRNA in therapeutics. While scientists then globally began working with mRNA to develop vaccines for other diseases like Zika, Kariko and Weissman's work was underfunded for decades until the arrival of the pandemic. Kariko especially struggled throughout her life and her personal commitment to studying mRNA averted the deaths of potentially millions more from COVID. COVID became a global pandemic in the early months of 2020, and thanks to the flexibility and the ease at which mRNA can work, their research enabled the approval of two vaccines by December of the same year. This is the fastest that any vaccine has ever been developed in history. How did this come about? Messenger RNA or mRNA is a molecule carrying a set of instructions that can be understood by ribosomes to produce proteins in the body. Genetic information that is stored in our complex double helix DNA is first broken down into single strand RNA and processed with mRNA. In the 1980s, labs around the world were able to produce mRNA without culturing human or mammalian cells by simply producing the molecules in the lab. This was called in vitro transcription, that is in the test tube, and this immediately accelerated molecular biology research. Some scientists attempted to use mRNA for producing vaccines and therapeutics, but like we previously saw, the body's immune system response was a hurdle. In vitro mRNA was unstable, it broke down easily, and in mammalian immune cells produced inflammatory reactions rejecting the mRNA. In the early 90s, Kariko was a professor at the University of Pennsylvania where she worked on overcoming these drawbacks all the while struggling with lack of funding. We'll come to that a little bit later but Weissman soon joined her at the same university having worked on specialized kind of immune cells called dendritic cells which patrol the body looking for foreign objects. When dendritic cells detect foreign objects, also called antigens, they activate the immune system. These two collaborated to understand why in vitro mRNA caused inflammation in cells in the lab while mammalian cell mRNA was easily accepted by these cells. It was evident to them that obviously mammalian cell mRNA that was produced naturally had some properties that were absent in the lab-grown molecules. This was the basis of their work and they overcame this hurdle. Now going forward to 2020, in the COVID vaccines, synthetic mRNA molecules carry instructions to produce a protein that is analogous to the spike protein of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, 
without inserting or using any component of the actual virus in the body or in the vaccine. Once our body processes this mRNA instruction to produce the spike protein, the mRNA molecule disintegrates. Dendritic cells that patrol the immune system then come into the picture. They detect this newly produced synthetic spike protein and they recognize it as foreign. So they immediately mount an immune system response. Thus, this trains our immune system to actually recognize the virus when it uses its real spike protein to latch on to the human body to infect it. This technology has been a game changer in vaccine development and a lifesaver. And for a long time, this was a lone woman's fight. Kariko struggled all her life. She grew up poor in Hungary and she had to sell her car on the black market to immigrate to the US. She was with Temple University from 1985 to 1990 when she joined the University of Pennsylvania. Research into mRNA at this time was so sparse that her work was repeatedly ignored for funding and as the world became more focused on genetic engineering of DNA, her research started to get more and more underfunded. She was demoted twice by the University of Pennsylvania for working on this and she was refused a bunch of grants and the university went so far as to revoke her full professorship. She was even threatened with deportation. After all of this, in 1995, because she recognized the potential of mRNA and wanted to continue working on it, she accepted a lower paid researcher position so that she could do so. In 2013, when Moderna made a deal with AstraZeneca to develop mRNA-based therapies, she was offered a role in the company, but she was told that she could be let go at any point without any notice. So instead, she moved on to BioNTech and she took on the role of senior vice president at this pharmaceutical company, which in fact co-produced the COVID vaccine with Pfizer. And today, not Pfizer and not Carico, but Moderna is often widely credited with bringing mRNA to everyone's attention and putting mRNA therapeutics on the map. Carico is said to gain just about 3 million from her world-saving research, while Moderna CEO Stefan Bonsell, investors like MIT's Bob Langer and Harvard's Tim Springer, and in fact BioNTech's owner Ugur Sahin had all become billionaires from soaring stock values by the end of 2020 itself. But the future is bright for mRNA. mRNA in vaccines has an established safety profile. Other mRNA vaccines currently in clinical trials are for HIV, Zika, rabies, herpes, and influenza. mRNA is also being used for immunotherapy to treat cancer where the body's own immune cells are trained to recognize cancer cells as foreign objects and fight them off. mRNA technology acts to help our body produce proteins but does not pass into our genetic code or to the future generations. Therefore, it is really safe to work with and holds a lot of promise to treat medical conditions in a safe manner without modifying the human DNA. Although this technology was so easy to use and produce, it hadn't won any approval for trials in humans before the pandemic in any drugs or vaccines. However, since the approval of the vaccines and now the Nobel, the technology is expected to develop rapidly and pave way for future, easier, cheaper and safer therapeutics.